Hi, I'm Madison, Enablement Manager at Builder. If you've watched our previous Builder 101 videos, we've covered our content model types, how the visual editor works, what the Builder provided visual content blocks are, and more. Today, we're going to put it all together, the start of your Builder 101 capstone. I'll show you step by step what it takes to set up a new project with Builder and connect your code into the visual editor for real-time content creation. This is the first step to unlocking the power of Builder. For this video, I'll be using Next.js and React, but we have a wide variety of SDK support for your framework of choice. First, I'm going to init a new Next.js project with create next app at latest, choosing TypeScript, ESLint, and Tailwind, but these are personal preference and have no bearing on the Builder SDK side of things. At the time of recording, I do need to choose no to TurboPack, however, as the Builder CLI is currently not supported with TurboPack. This will use Webpack instead. Next, I'm going to initialize Builder with our dev tool. This makes it easy to set up the SDK. We'll scaffold a few helpers for us and create a temporary setup host. npm init builder.io at latest. Accept the prompt asking to install dependencies and update the Next.js config. I'm choosing Gen 1 for the SDK version, as this is currently still the recommended option for Next.js projects. But our Gen 2 SDKs are production ready. Check out our docs at the link below for more details on our SDKs. All this does is add the Builder dev tools to the next config and install dependencies to the package JSON. Once that's done, we can start the dev server with npm run dev, and it will begin the one-time setup process by prompting you to connect to Builder. Clicking the Get Started button, will ask you to sign in and authorize your project with Builder. If you have access to more than one space, choose the one you would like to connect to. This will grab the API key from your space so your code base has the necessary credentials added to a .env file and create a few files to kickstart your Builder connection. With this completed, the setup is done. Now that we have this running locally, we can load an example page that the CLI created in Builder for us. You can see the dev tools running with the Builder icon in the bottom right, and it's highlighting all Builder blocks on this example page when I hover them. Next, let's go into Builder and configure our page model to point to our local dev server. This will tell the visual editor where to load our site for the visual previews iframe and we'll let our site inform Builder of the custom components available. We'll go into the model settings in the menu here, then click on the page model. We'll add our localhost colon 3000 server here, or whatever port your local server is running on. Normally, the preview URL will be your live site's domain, but it's quite common for initial development to be set up like this. Later, if you still need to point to a local dev server, you can temporarily change the preview URL by manually typing in the visual editor, use the session-based developer override with Command or Control K to bring up the command palette, click on Toggle Developer Options, and add your local host to the Override Preview URL Host field. Or, if you're on our enterprise plan, you can take advantage of our environments features to set up distinct content configurations while syncing the content from your production environment. You can do a lot more with preview URLs. We support a JavaScript-based dynamic configuration option, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Now that our page model is pointing to our local server, let's create a new page and confirm that the live preview is working. We'll go to the content page on the menu here, then click this new button and select page model type. Remember, page models are always tied to a URL path, so we'll have to add one here. I'll call this entry demo, which will pre-fill the URL as slash demo. 
but you can have the URL be anything you want. And there you go. Our demo page successfully connected to our local server. And we can start to create content using the available blocks. Once we have our content ready, let's preview it. Sometimes you need to get eyes on your new content without publishing it to the world. Use the preview button to get a unique link to the current draft, or use the QR code to copy it to your phone for testing on mobile. This opens your live site to the content's targeted path, but overrides the normal data fetching process with the draft data instead. One of the benefits of using our SDK. I recognize this is still a localhost server though, so let's all pretend that this was a live hosted site instead. With two thumbs up, our content is ready to publish. All we need to do is hit the publish button, wait a minute, and refresh our live localhost page. We've completed the end-to-end -end setup of connecting the visual editor, live preview, and confirmed we've connected to Builder for the live site. Good work, team! If your framework or configuration isn't supported by our dev tools at the moment, don't worry, we have manual setup instructions on our website. Check out the Integrating Page Models documentation. We can also look at the Git diff to see everything changed during this process, if you wanted to recreate it manually. Here's what was added. The Builder registry file. This is a place to register your custom components with Builder and includes an example counter component. The catch all app route file, which pre-connects to the page model type and includes a helper function for rendering builder content with the render builder content component. If we go into the implementation of this component, you can see that we're simply checking if we have content from the API for when the content is live, or if we're previewing using the visual editor then rendering said content using the SDK's builder component. Otherwise, we show a 404. And the .env file with my spaces API key. For those following along on your own projects, if you've run into problems, we recommend posting on our builder forum at forum.builder.io. For paying customers, create a support ticket through the in-app help widget. And if you're really stuck, reach out to your dedicated customer engineer or customer success manager. With our site fully connected to Builder, we can begin working on custom components. Watch the next Builder 101 video in the series to continue from where we're leaving off today. We'll cover expanding the UI options for your content creators by registering code components from your code base into Builder highlighting one of Builder's key market differentiators and a huge win for your content creator team. Thanks for watching and happy building.